So, let's see where the joyous tool is. There it is. So I've got a really clean catch pan. I've really cleaned around that thing. And we're going to turn this into fractionals. What do you think it is? It looks like it's one inch. This nut right here. Well, that's one of the few times where you get to kind of get it within reason. I got no idea what's behind this thing. One and one sixty fourths, or one. Well, okay. So let's try one on it. Okay. Well, whatever it is that you got to deal with, you got to deal with it. You know how it is. So let's uh, see if I can get that to keep it from splattering all over everything. And uh, let's uh, now leave that to. What's hooking me? I don't know. Leave that to one side so any dirt that you may knock off or stuff like the old me trying to stop it from leaking before, there's already some kind of washer there. Uh, let me let me uh, see about this thing. Okay, let me do this and then we'll, I'll... I didn't realize that. I don't know if I've... I guess an O-ring would work for that. Am I going to need a pick to get that out of there? Let's see, I've got picks right here. I would be very careful with all of these things because I got these real fancy dental picks, but we I don't want to use those. So let's see if I can get this out of here. It doesn't look like it. It's loose but it doesn't want to come out. So there could be some answer why that is. It could be that it's another fitting. Now, I'll tell you a trick about neoprene. If you need to swell it up, usually you spray some WD-40 on it and it causes it to swell, but you... Somebody's here. Oh, it's only Mickey. Sean says he's coming here soon to do it. So, good to see you, pal. Good to see you, pal. Look at you. With that white shirt ain't going to work here, brother. I got to tell you. Yeah, you, I ain't got nothing else for you to wear. Well, you want to... I'll, I'll fix her up and we'll drop her down and go for a ride. And I, I, got hung, I got hung up on stuff. I'll tell you about it. I could get some stuff done if we get rid of this thing. I know. I think about this thing from time to time. <laughs> you can I'll leave it. Oh, I got you something. Now that you're living on the farm, you may find that you'll, you'll have use for these little brushes on on uh, carburetors and whatnot. Just Thank little you. brushes and open them up. Don't you? I got I got two of them. Just uh, just for, got some for you in case you're working on a little car. See all those little things in there? They're little tiny files and little things to clean out like ports with. Oh Lord, you need to keep this cheap. No, I got one. Wow! Thank so you. those are for you because now that you got a what is it at forty four hundred John Deere? Is that right? Forty seven twenty. Forty seven twenty. Well, I only missed it by a couple of hundred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever it takes. So I, those will come in handy when you're when you're working on little uh, cool. stuff like that. So you go ahead and put it over there so we won't forget it. All right, we might go for a test run here soon. Come stand in the shade. You like standing? Look, you, it's like Mr. Freeze on Batman. You can stand in the shade or the, or the sun. So what do you got here? So this old boy on Craigslist down in uh, Rock Hill had this uh, Freon sniffer. Oh, baby. For $100. And these lists for $225 new. You can get them probably $175. But I thought it was in good shape. It's only been used. And he was a pro. He was a pro heating and air guy. And he said he loves it, but he's got two of them. So he sold this one. Well, and, uh, you're uptown now. So I, I was talking to him, and we met at this ra uh, gas station. And he was asking 100, so I rolled up on him. We, I said, all right, I'm your buyer. I said, would you go 80? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'll go 80. So I gave him $80 and drove away, and he drove away. But I looked in the rearview mirror, and he was behind me, and I started thinking, you know, it's in good shape. This thing new costs 200 It's probably worth 100 So at a stoplight, a red light, he was behind me. So I got out, I put it in dry, a park. I got out and I walked back to him with a twenty dollar bill. He said, "What? What's up, boss man?" I said, "It's probably worth a hundred. Here you go." Here you go. What a nice guy. What a I'm nice man. Soft in my old age. <laughs> I know. You what got to watch things like that. 
Well, let's, the let's, let's bone them and run. Let's, let's make the U-turn and floor it and get out of here before they catch us. Some of your watchers may recognize Infinicon Techmate. Some may not. <laughs> but I think this is better than better than uh, your your, your somewhat you. department store. Um, yeah, you your 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 Friday at night Something guy that's only going to use it four or five times. Yeah. So, what about your vacuum pump? You going to get a vacuum pump? For your air conditioning? No, I'm just going to have to rely on my friends. Okay. For now. Well, I got that big robin there whenever you need to use it. Well, show me the, all the bombs. Stuff. Well, let me... We can get on the road, and I can get on the road. Yeah, let me get her down and get her on the road. I'll tell you what happened to me. When we when we go down, don't we forget to put the wings on it. Yeah. So, I, you might have seen it, but I changed the differential oil the other day. Did you see that one? Uh-uh. It's out there. I... I put I, I sucked with my, my Robin Air all three quarts out of that thing. Good. And uh, so she's got new differential oil. But today's project was this. That is a strap-on bong for the fuel air mixture device that uh, is going to run my air fuel mixture thing. Oh, uh, I see. And see, I I had one welded in, but I didn't like why, it. Why, <laughs> why do you have to do fuel air mixture again? To adjust your carburetor. Okay. Because you know you want the fourteen point seven to one stokey so Reading to know how to adjust. It. Yeah, and this and this just guesswork. Uh, other than that, I'm not going to do this right now, gang. We'll have to put. The, I, I, I was getting ready to. I was getting ready to pull this to see why it's leaking. This is a. This is my one of my leaks in this old gearbox. Oh, and I got to show you the book. I looked up a new speedometer cable. Not only are they not available, this car, 1964, didn't come with this gearbox. Yeah, it must have been some. It's not even listed. Hmm. So there must. This must have been some highfalutin fancy order. It, late 19. I, this thing was made in April of 64, as I remember. So uh, anyway, yeah, I, I've been having to work low because I've been having to honk on those things. That took an hour to put in. Oh my God. Because you got to drill a hole. I had to get a plug and align it. You can't use this as an alignment because it's too fragile. And uh, then I then getting it started and the hole. It was a. And as everybody will tell you, it's a big magilla. You got it on the run. Yeah, I'm done with it now. All I got to do now is we're gonna tie all this stuff up. And then it's not time for the test drive. Oh no, it, it, it. it's time. It's time. <laughs> You do maiden voyage, okay? <laughs> okay, so here we go, gang. Maiden voyage. Mick's gonna be my videographer here. Uh, let's get her started and see if I can get her to idle. Okay. And you gotta give her a couple of pumps. She's probably not going to idle. I've been messing with the... Uh... She's going to shut down because i got to turn the idle screw up. Well, what do you think of that, that so is far? smooth. Ultra smooth. Ain't it, though? I wanted somebody else to say it. And look, there's no big, huge clouds of smoke. Boy, can't you see our mothers now in their Oldsmobiles and whatnot. So I'm going to try to get her to just idle. Now she'll, she's, like I've mentioned, she's a lot like any old big motor of this era. They don't idle well unless they're warm. And that, that can take a little time. It, it still to this day takes time with DAF. So, okay, let's see if we can get her to roll here. All right, I'm going to let Mick take this over here in a little bit. And we're just now coming to temperature, 60 pounds, half a tank. We've got about... A little under 15 volts there. Okay. What you got to say? I don't know. It was almost a year ago when we suffered all our, our pain, right? Okay. She sounds like an old great big GM. All right. Out we go. Out into the light. We're going to do the Klein Road loop. Uh, you want Buckle up for safety, or do you care? 
Uh, I can't, can't free my hands right now. All right, yeah, you can. All right. Mixed car's right behind us, so we gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're all. Oh, she wants to bounce into gear. All right, this is her first forward motion. Let's turn this fan on. I don't know, I don't guess I need to. Whoa, this is nerve wracking. Clock is running. submarine joke there uh yeah and they're not they'll grab on you a little bit see i got brakes good now see i got my fuel gauge down here but i i took my old fuel fuel gauge and just it's up oh yeah I, and i just made it show kind of half a tank all yeah. the time instead because i don't want to look at being empty all the time all right there's no big heat. clear right clear thanks reed one out of twelve. Well, let's see if she shifts. I got the speedometer cable disconnected from the head unit, so I don't... Well, she's changing gears. I think we're going to go up here and just turn around. I don't want to go too far. We're doing it, we're doing it. We're probably going 35 or 40, but I was getting ready to take that speedometer stuff off. So. And you know, you're not really supposed to go much over 35 or so. That's what the factory said. Smooth. Imagine when you get the hood on it, you won't even hear this motor. It is so cool sometimes driving a vehicle without bonding on it. Jaguar's the best because the whole front end's off of it. All right, let's see. Power steering's working. Brakes are working. The atomic batteries are to power. Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> let's try reverse. Yeah. So we'll drive right into reverse. Let's, when we get back, I'll let you... Grass. Well, that's the maiden voyage. We're up to 180, so let's put our fan on. I like to keep my trim screws somewhere where they don't have to worry about them. Yeah. They won't go. <laughs> that bleeding edge of that rubber bounce is bugging me. of oil pressure and even though she's she's warm all right I guess we better head back yeah. back <laughs> head back well nothing fell off so I don't, everything still in the car can still hurt me <laughs> I think you're home chief you think I got it oh uh, yeah I think you got her and just like a uncle Tom, Tony's garage or whatever this is thousands of hours. I mean, it's, you think you're going to, and I don't know how many decades of experience. <laughs> I mean, I think maybe in, um, I'd say 160, 180,000 miles, you might want to get her up on a lift again, but shine the light around. But 
Other than that, I think you got it. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to let you guide me up on the lift. There's almost no other way to go up there, but the it, it is nice to have somebody here. Wow. It's big. I think what you got to do now is you just put some miles on this. Get cooling in. Yeah, I got my coolant issues. I still got that grime. I think I'm gonna have to go a little bit to the left. Okay, we're gonna see if she runs on. Nope. You did it, Chevy. <laughs> I want my air conditioning going the wrong way. What's that running? Oh, it's the it's the house. It's the floor fan. <laughs> Whatever you hear, you get all worried about it. Oh, uh, I need to. Well, I'm not gonna worry about it. Very pleasant. I see no issues. Well, last year there was coolant issues. and all kind of stuff bubbling all over the top of the motor, and that's usually indicates uh, doesn't indicate freshness. <laughs> Damn, brother! Perfect. All right, I'm gonna get on the road. I gotta get on the road. I'd love to sit and have a beer with you, though. Well, there's there's some. Let's go. Let's go get one real quick. All right, enough of that. Go get a thumbs up. Okay. Mick's going to get everybody he knows to subscribe so I can get up to what? Three people. I, I've got three already, so maybe that'll be, make it six. <laughs> so uh, Mick left, heading back to the ranch. And I'm back under here briefly, not for very much longer, but I think I found my leak uh, here. So we're going to pull. I'm going to pull this tonight. I don't care if it hair lips everybody on Bear Creek. And uh, I worked a long time to get all of this stuff off of it. The undercoating that I believe probably saved this car. But every now and then it gets in the way. So uh, let's pull this thing out of here. I think I said that was one inch. That seems like, like a year ago now, but it wasn't. All right. Well, it does seem to be like one inch so uh, I don't think I need a tripod for this uh, I hope that we don't get a bunch of transmission fluid that splatters all over the all over the place oh let's just see what I can do here oh, oh. Oh, there we go I didn't think that was in there too hard I guess I need to slip myself a glove on here. Uh, well, I don't know what to expect. Okay. Don't want to get boiling hot transmission fluid in your in your eyes. So let's uh, see if I can spin this with my hand now. And we will do what we can. Uh, can't. Can't do it with my hands quite yet. My hands are might tired. Oh, here. You never know when it's gonna let go. And I don't know what kind of sealant I got on there. Now we know there's gonna be a little gear behind here. I'm starting to think the speedometers are overrated. Yeah, that's some pretty fine thread there. I wonder how you rate these threads on this stuff. I mean, even if I save this fluid and reuse it, I'm going to filter it. Eh, it looks pretty clean in there for now. So it took a little time. This thread is fine as wine. And uh, let's just see what happens. Now I've done these before and they really gloop out the, the stuff. So let's, uh, I really don't want this splattering all over me. Tell you 
you what, you talk about something paid for itself, it's been this catch right here. And uh, let's see, I'm gonna clean, I'm gonna probably ultrasonic this anyway. So let's see what we get out of the old TH400. Well, oh, well, no fluid. So let's let's go over somewhere safe. Might be a little noisy. I'm not. I'm so tired of turning the music on and off. So demonetize me. So so there doesn't seem to be a seal of any kind around those threads. Okay, so uh, let's just uh, let's just take a. Whew, God, I can't. I can't bear this anymore. So, what is it? That is an interesting little device there. It doesn't seem to be worn. I feel, actually I feel a little something in there, but... Whoa! How do you get that thing out of there? I guess I... Well, I really don't want to mess with that. I can't see an O-ring helping you out there. All right, so let's just let that sit there overnight, and maybe she'll uh, get pregnant on us, and uh, we'll see. All right, well, good night, guys. We'll catch it up again tomorrow.